uh, had the Soraki, Beth O'Connor, Ellie Espling, Carrie, um, Prescott. Carrie Prescott, and uh, another lady from the Mid Coast who I'm sorry Beth for listening. Beth O'Connor. Uh, yeah, Beth has been in. There's been another lady from the Mid Coast whose name escapes me at the moment. She's a carpentress, as she told me. Oh, Kim Olson. Yes, Kim, forgive mm-hmm. me. Yeah. And it's been great having you guys in because it's nice for people to understand that Republicans aren't just old white fat cat guys like me, you know, <laughs> old guys over the hill. We have a lot of wonderful, fierce women who have strong beliefs who are up there trying to get things done. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great group of ladies. I agree. I agree. And, and most of them, Carrie's not a freshman up there, but right. most of them are freshmen, which is really yeah. good. We're going to have an opportunity to see you guys rise. I think if we all work hard together, out of one of you, we'll probably become the next speaker somewhere down the road. Oh, maybe. You know, well, yeah. we got to keep the majority to do that. But I think if we can keep the majority and keep moving forward in your third term or your fourth term, one of you will end up being speaker probably. And that will be good for me. And that will show a different side of the Republican Party, uh, a side that the media never wants to portray. I don't. I think the media wants everyone to think that Republicans are nothing but wealthy white guys mm-hmm. 50 years and older. Yeah. And that's just not the case. And even the women, um, like um, Senator Collins and, and Senator Snow, you know, they're, they're, and they're absolutely, I mean, I'm a huge, huge um, admirers of both of them, but neither one of them have families. And, you know, we all have, have families, and so, you know, we know, we know where it's at as far as um, what we want for the future of our kids. Right. And that's why a lot of us ran, because we were just tired of standing on the sidelines and, you know, going to PTA meetings or whatever, and we well, decided exactly to get right. more involved. I mean, you, you have four children, I think, right? Yes. Yeah. I have four children. I know uh, some of the other ladies who've been in have children. We want our children to live here. Maine is a wonderful right. place. This is, I mean, I could not be happier that my children have grown up in Westbrook, Maine. Yeah. My wife, Dee, and I believe it's the best community in the state. No offense to Scarborough. Hey, I don't know, Ray. And uh, <laughs> we, we just love it there. And we want them to have the opportunity to raise their children in Westbrook, Maine, if they want to. And so we've got to turn this economy around. So I'm really thrilled that you guys are all, there's a a nice, what I'll call, cluster of Republican women Mm -hmm. who are helping lead the charge. Ruth Schieber, the state rep out of Naples, is the one that said to me, hey, look, we need to get these ladies on. They're bright lights in the legislature, and more people need to know about it. So we've been doing this a couple of months Mm -hmm. on Tuesday mornings. It's been great. We've enjoyed it yeah, it's tremendously. Been, it's been really great. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I want to do today is, is last week, as you know, because you were part of the attack or the attacked, <laughs> I guess, is they came out and said that, hey, look, you know, this um, this re- repeal of registering to vote on Election Day is a good idea. And even people who support ending it have used it. And you were one of the people they cited mm-hmm. as having used Election Day registration to vote. But you say... That's not true. It didn't happen. Right. Explain what happened here. <laughs> well, first of all, Ray, um, it, the long story is that I, when that story broke, I thought, so? I mean, what, right, sure. what is the big deal well, here? It's not a story. It's not a story. Um, if you're given a deadline, you follow that deadline, just like you do when you're paying your taxes, registering your car, you know, registering your dog, getting your beach pass for beach, for, for you know, uh, right. for Pete's sake in Scarborough. Um, every Scarborough resident that I know practically goes and buys a beach pass right. before they want to go to the beach. Um, and so, you know, we, I thought, what's the big deal? Then on an um, on the radio, not this program, another program, I heard. Well, we um, provide accurate information here. <laughs> I heard a certain prominent political figure from the last gubernatorial campaign um, suggesting, uh, in the same few minutes that we were all called hypocrites, um, suggesting that you know these were politically active, politically engaged people, and I thought to myself. Geez, the last time I registered to vote, I had no idea I was ever going to be running for office, and I was not right. particularly engaged in politics. As like you're saying, most of the women who um, you know are freshmen up there weren't. You right. know, we were raising our families, going about our lives, you know, doing our jobs, and. Uh, 
we hadn't thought about running for office until very recently. Much like Governor um, LePage. You know, Governor LePage yeah. had not been involved in politics. Exactly. And then he saw a problem in the city of Waterville. He felt that it lacked leadership. Mm -hmm. He went there. He won. He won, I think, three times. And then he said, I see a similar problem in the state of Maine. And he decided to run for governor. But he was not a career politician. He saw a problem, felt he had the skill set to address it. Absolutely. So I was just Joe Citizen, you know, mom from Scarborough, Maine. Right. And I thought, okay, um, I'm going to go and just have a look at what year that was so that I can at least say, hey, you know, back in, as it happens to be, 1999, that was a long time ago. Yeah, that was, what, 12 years ago? Yeah, 12 years ago, when I first moved to Scarborough, I was not politically active. Right. And um, so... As the clerk was, was pulling my voter registration stuff, and I hadn't even seen it yet, I jokingly said, apparently I'm a hypocrite because I used same-day uh, registration back 12 years ago. And she looked at it and she said, no, you didn't. And I went, what? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> and uh, she said, no, you registered on um, October 27th. And she said, and that wouldn't have been even within two days of an election. And my jaw just dropped. So where did they get the information that said that you had, in fact, registered to vote on election? Well, it's dated in my hand for the 27th. I have it right here. Yeah. Um, and this was posted online as well. I sent it out in my e-newsletter. Um, and, uh, and it's stamped by the registrar for October 30th. But nowhere in there does it say received on October 30th. It was simply processed on October 30th. And what we've discovered is that oftentimes clerks have held on to people's registrations and then processed them. You know, I don't know if they're processing them all at once or whatever it is. Right. October 30th, 1999 happened to be a Saturday. The election day was Tuesday, November 2nd in 99. The hall is not open on Saturdays. Correct, Ray. So you could not have walked it in. No. Absolutely not. Um, and the fact that a clerk or a registrar um, were, was working on a Saturday before Election Day sort of supports Charlie Summers' assertion that these clerks are overburdened. And uh, in 1999, that was long before we were using a lot of absentee ballots. So you can imagine what it's like now on the week before an election or the Saturday before an election. Well, if we go back to the law, Charlie Summers, the Secretary of State, was the architect of this law. He got the Speaker of the House and the mm -hmm. Senate President to support it and to put it out there. Charlie's contention at the time was not that we had massive voter fraud. That actually came from Charlie Webster, the chairman of the Republican mm -hmm. Party. Charlie Summers said that we have a big burden on the city clerks, the town clerks, and we need to try to alleviate some of that burden. Right. And when he did his investigation, which was a very minor investigation, it was four one hundredths of one percent, he found that of the opportunities for voter fraud, 84 percent were clerical error. 79% of which happened on election day, right. which would support his idea mm -hmm. that clerks are overburdened on election day. Exactly, exactly. So, in other words, they put out false data. Has anyone apologized? Uh, I, ins I um, the reporter was Rebecca Mitzler um, from uh, the Portland Press Herald. It also appeared in the Bangor Daily. Um, because I live in the Portland area, I contacted her. Actually, my husband contacted her first. Um, and uh, and then I, I contacted her and because she claimed that she had tried to reach me and that I had had no comment. Well, apparently she contacted House staff. Um, I am very easy to reach. Yes, you are. All of my phone time. numbers, emails are easily accessible online. I'm in the phone book. Nobody ever called me personally. Personally. So the first thing I said is, in the future, if you are using my name in a story, please do contact me. Here is my contact information in case you had a hard time finding it. If you're looking to be <clears throat> fair and balanced, you would obviously mm -hmm. get the other side of the story. Right. If you're going to want to present one side. So did they apologize? Uh, there was. She told me she was going to print a clarifying story. Now, what appeared was on page A2 at the very bottom... Um, I don't remember what day, the end of last week, uh, there was a very small um, clarification, but it still claimed that my card or my registration was received 
on October 30th. This does not say it was received on October 30th. No, it just says it was processed on that day. Exactly. Well, again, it goes to the point that we've made all along. These guys, this argument is much ado about nothing. States all over the country, I believe 44 states, do not allow Election Day voter registration, and they do it for a reason. Mm -hmm. When you have Election Day voter registration, you're, you have the opportunity for fraud. Yeah. Now, it appears that the people who are supporting the repeal of this law are okay with some fraud because they, Charlie, Sum, Charlie Summers, the Secretary of State, did uncover actual voter fraud and they have poo-pooed it, said it was no big deal. So the, the, the truth is, those who want to repeal the law are okay with some level of voter fraud. What we haven't determined is how much voter fraud is too bad. Well, listen, Ray, they're okay with, with lying in the press. Right. Even when faced with the facts, the they truth. still can't print the truth. And well, so that tells you the type of people that we're dealing with. And, you know, I mean... It would be I mean, nice if the Press Herald were to reprint a real retraction. Did they call Scarborough Town Hall? Uh, she claims that she had checked, um, personally looked at all of the registrations that were named in the story. I frankly don't believe that. Yeah. It's too bad. State Representative Amy Bo, thanks a lot for being in. Thanks for clearing the record here. Sure. I look forward to seeing you again. It is... Wow, let's see if we can get this right. Wow, we're running late, Dean. Dean, we're very...